There you go. Welcome back, guys, to another episode. It's DAing, trust me. It's me. <laughs> it's after work hours. It is 4... 4.15. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to catch some bass, some fish, after work hours. And it's very simple. Follow these steps and your after work days will be a lot better, I promise you. So stick around. I'm going to talk to you guys as much as I can on my GoPro chest. And after that, I'm taking it off because it's 92 degrees out right now. There, It's hot and it's like slight breeze. So it's busy. We got a bunch of boulders out here. We got a bunch of activities. But we're going to wait for that to die down. We're gonna get into action so hopefully i can make this video interesting for you guys stick around and i'll see you guys we're already on the water let's do it here they come <laughs> all right i just had to retire real quick here i'm gonna talk to you guys about all the baits that i have lined up here in a bit okay and why it's gonna make sense these few simple steps are gonna help you guys be successful at it so yes i got a bandito bug on i'm actually just gonna leave that out here my DSR is over there, but I don't think I need it today. Not until I catch like a decent fish. I gotta hide it. It's so freaking hot. Out. I stopped at Cabela's to pick up some jigs too. All right, so first off, as soon as I hit the water, I'll, depending, okay, if the sun has been up all day, hopefully it's been up all day. <laughs> if the sun's been up all day, um, you wanna hit up the docks right away. If there's a lot of dock, or if it's a dock lake. Uh, if not, then you go offshore, and I'll, I'll talk to you guys that in a bit here. But as of right now, what I'm covering, I'm doing dock fishing. Why? The sun's been up all day. It's been hot. Water temperature is 78 degrees, guys. That's what it's reading right here, 78 degrees. So it is hotter than normal. And that also means that these fish are going to be couch potatoes. The most time that they're active is later at night, later evening, right? Or early morning, if you get the morning light. Overall... It's pretty freaking hot out. And we're gonna present with the jig, black and blue, three eight ounce jig. We're gonna flip into these docks. We're gonna check every single dock, okay? As efficient as we can. You don't, sorry for the dog up there. But you don't wanna rush it, okay? You don't wanna rush anything because these fish, they're gonna be hiding in these mats, these covers for any kind of like uh, cooling, okay? This is like their AC. They're gonna be hiding in these shaded areas. So it's important to have like a skipping rod up skipping jig a skipping setup i should say and you know work these ducks if you don't have a jig throw a sinko a sinko will work just fine there's some uh bro those bass cart oh my gosh terrible i think there's a carp yeah there's a carp they ran away but again you want to spend some time flipping these shaded areas you'll be surprised how shallow these bass move into just to find cover just to find um areas to ambush bait fish again i'll try my best to talk as much as i can for a little bit and then we're gonna just fish because whew, wearing this harness it makes you sweat even more it's crazy so me personally i like the fast reaction bite right but if you want to you could throw a single like i'll have a single i have my spinning bar right there it's ready for a single if i feel like you're on that single bite but i don't know i just like that jig bite i just like when they snatch it uh, they, they, they react to it Okay, that's just me, all right? Do that or a Senko. It's up to you. Sometimes if they get too lethargic, they prefer a Senko. Or a stick bait, you guys should call it, all right? And beware of docks that have chain, okay? Some of those people purposely put that stuff there because they don't want you skipping under it. So, if I feel like they're not taking a jig, the bigger profile, then we're gonna go with the, uh, the creature bait okay let me check this stretch real quick oh i just got hit <laughs> little guy i think a little fish just picked my uh jig up all right so it's important to practice skipping or flipping or pitching whatever you want to call it right just get your bait in there the other option that i would do that i would recommend if you're coming off of work is to fish points offshore points the benefits of points is that it's deeper right 15 plus feet and you can fish the bottom, you can drop shot. You can uh, drag a football jig. That's what I was gonna do, but they're having a party over there, so I can't fish my point anymore. And people are actually hanging out over there. So I was forced to come on this side and flip some docks real quick. And this is my, you know, this is my flipping and skipping ride and die combo, okay? You guys are wondering, I do work with Okuma. It's just that this setup here was given to me by a very special friend. 
uh, the reel I bought myself, right? I worked and I saved money. I bought this myself. But the route is given to me by a very special friend. So if you guys see me use this combo here and there, that is because, you know, it, it just means a lot to me when I use it, you know? It, it feels good. It feels good to use it, to fish with it. I might fly across if they're not over there. I'm just waiting for them to finish up over there. I might fly to the other side because there's people on this stretch. Oh yeah, there's just few, so I'm actually gonna go to the other side. Just because. We'll go, let's go. I don't want to interfere this side yet since it's busy, it's occupied. But basically, the lures that you want to have on deck for... I gotta turn this way, it's kind of good. The lures that you want to have on deck is a jig. A, you know, a jig or flipping creature bait. It's up to you, I don't care, just one of those two. Um, so that counts as one, right? Like a skipping, flipping, uh, tactical way of uh, attacking covers, okay? That counts as one, okay? A top water. You want a top water lure tied on. Frog or spook, doesn't matter. I have one tied on right here. And then, again, the third lure. I'm doing third, but, you know, it's like that, okay? <laughs> These two count as one. The third lure that I would recommend is an offshore lure, okay? Either spinning rod, drop shot, whatever, Texas rig, light tackle, whatever or a football jig or a heavier jig that you can get to the bottom faster and you want those areas you want to tackle at 15 to 20 feet of water okay go 30 hey i don't care go 30 if you want to but i don't ever fish 30 uh, unless i'm doing like walleyes or smallies or whatever but for largemouth um normally i do 15 to 20 feet of water and it's all offshore areas okay when we say offshore we're talking you know 15 to 20 feet uh, offshore weed lines, offshore points, areas that slopes down where the bass can like stage there, get ready to climb up to feed at night. Because what happens is that during the day they either slow down and they just they just chill out. Okay, they chill out. Once it gets cooler, it gets dimmer. You guys already know prime times when that sun is getting lower, things start popping, top water action, uh, the the lake starts to quiet down, people start to just you know just disappear. That's when you want to fish. Okay, right now. I feel like the docks should be ready for us to attack. Maybe. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of action. I'm seeing a lot of people walk on there. I'm seeing a lot of things going on. So let's just flip a jig for a little bit and see what happens, okay? Stick to the jig for now because I feel like I'm more accurate with the jig. I can swim it like a bluegill too, you know? Oh, I just got hit. Oh no, <laughs> that was a fish. I just got hit, dude. <laughs> I think that was a rock bass or something. Got him. Bacon. Bacon. No, it popped off. It popped off. <laughs> I went the wrong way, dude. Oh, I just had one. It popped off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You guys saw that. I, I caught it and it popped off. <laughs> yep, it happened. I wasn't I wasn't ready for that one. Oh god. It got wrapped on that tire. That's why. Got another one. Oh it's wrapped, it's wrapped, it's wrapped. There it goes. The little guy. See, got this one. Did that one was like three pounds. Just lost a three pounder. There you go guys. I'm like trying to set the hook all like weird, dude. Okay, first fish. Woo! It got windy, you know? It's windier on this side and we're trying to work with the waves and I, I lost it, you know? Yep. Got me all worked up now, let's go. At least I'm not the only fisherman here. Stretch out my line real quick. It's good to make a random cast. Just to straighten it out, you know. So you can skip better. Or flip better. Got him. Yep. There we go. Haha. Got us up a good bass. Oh yeah. Hi. Thank you. Finally. <laughs> I 
Just like that, guys. Big old chunky bass. This thing is thick. It's short, but it's at least a pound. Oh. Alright, buddy. <laughs> Bro, last game. Oh, dude, I got one. I got one. I actually got one. What the freak? I actually got a fish. Oh, what the pike? <laughs> you got a pike, dude. What the heck? Big old pike. Yep. Dude came after my freaking jig, man. Big old pike. Wow. Just like that, guys. I'm trying to lip them. Just kidding. Oh, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> there we go. Nice pike. Wow. Look at that thing. Grabbed it right by the boat, too. Big, healthy pike. See you, buddy. Dang, gave me a clap back, too.